Hello, and thank you for joining me for an overview demo of SendGrid's email API. During this overview, we'll take a look at SendGrid's UI, as well as talk about SendGrid's different statistics offerings, including the event webhook, the email activity feed, and the different stats APIs and dashboards we give our customers access to. We'll also take a look at an API request and talk about the value customers see when utilizing that API, as well as a look at the different parameters that are available when using an API to deliver your emails. Now let's talk briefly about the UI. Now what you're seeing here is really just a high level dashboard displayed to any SendGrid customer as they log into their account that's going to show them the health of their account in either a weekly or a monthly view. Now it should also be noted that this is just one dashboard of many different stats dashboards that we give our customers access to. You can see all of these under the stats dropdown within your account when you're logged in. Furthermore, SendGrid currently dog foods our APIs to power the user interface that you see today. And really what that means is that virtually anything I can do within the UI can also be accomplished via an API call. Now let's talk about a couple of different UI elements that an API-based sender might find interesting. And we'll start with templates. Now, SendGrid has a transactional template engine, which essentially allows marketers and developers to work in tandem to build templates that can later be utilized via an API request. Now, the template language that we utilize there is a dynamic template language. It's going to be a handlebar syntax-based language that essentially allows developers and marketers to use conditional statements, iterations, uh, simple and deep object replacement, to build truly dynamic and highly personalized templates. Now, the beauty of this approach, by the way, is that it allows for the code that was traditionally used for building conditional templates or dynamic content to be taken out of the code base and put into a templated approach. Um, this is going to take a lot of the risk out of making any sort of content changes and also allows the marketing teams to get better insight and to actually make changes to transactional content. Now, another element of, of the UI that any sender will find interesting is suppressions. Suppressions is essentially where SendGrid stores all the previously failed emails that you attempted to deliver, as well as maintains lists of recipients who've asked to no longer receive email communications from you. Now, these lists act as do not call lists, essentially. So if you tried to send a request to someone who had previously hard bounced, for instance, on this list, SendGrid would drop that request and actually give you back an event that said this email was dropped due to being pre a previously bounced address. Now we do this automated suppression handling, by the way, to comply with industry best practices, as well as protect you as a sender, um, to protect your domain and IP reputation out there. Another area that any sender will find interesting is settings. Now this is essentially the area of the, your account where you can start to change your account or billing details but it's also where I can do things like setting up two-factor authentication or IP access management to establish account security. I can also do things like purchase IP addresses from SendGrid here, as well as create things like API keys for my uh, API-based role permissions or teammate credentials for multi-user credentials for logging into the UI. Um, I can also do things like create child accounts or fully authenticate my domain links and IP addresses directly through this portion of the UI. Now let's go take a look at the API and start to discuss the mail send endpoint that SendGrid provides our customers. Now before I go into the API itself, I would like to briefly explain that SendGrid takes developer experience very seriously. Uh, we have API libraries written in every major language out there, which allow developers to quickly adopt SendGrid in their preferred language and start sending an email within minutes, if not seconds. Now, in terms of the API that you're seeing, um, it has a documented rate limit of 10,000 transactions per second which essentially means that I could send this one, this one message 10,000 times in the next second if I wanted to. Now we also allow customers to do batching. So you can see this header that I've highlighted here. Um, you can actually replicate this header up to 1,000 times per request to send to 1,000 recipients in any single request. That's actually gonna bring that processing rate limit closer to around 10 million recipients per second that I can process via this API. 
Now we're going to kind of go through parameter by parameter with the API, and I'll provide some color as to how this is utilized and some background on why SendGrid utilizes it this certain way. Authorization, for instance, SendGrid primarily uses API keys uh, to prove you are who you say you are or to authenticate mail as you deliver it on your, on your account. Now we do operate a closed relay, so things like logging into the UI or even sending a message are going to require some form of authorization. Now keep in mind, because we use APIs to power our UI, our API keys are highly permission-based. They can touch on every endpoint that we provide and either give or restrict access on a per endpoint level. So these can be highly permission-based keys that we create. Furthermore, we do allow for basic authentication. However, we prefer um, API keys as they are more secure. Personalizations is probably one of the most powerful aspects of the V3 API that we offer today. And what this allows is I can essentially batch multiple recipients as part of my personalization header. Again, a thousand recipients with each request. But I can also process personal information um, via these requests to then personalize my content for an individual recipient. So in this example, I would actually be doing simple object replacement to personalize the first name. And then in my template, I am actually sending in three different languages, and I'm going to specify that I want the English version of content displayed, as well as, again, personalization of the first name of the recipient. Now, I'm going to come back to categories in a little bit when we get to towards the end of this demonstration and talk about statistics offerings. Uh, from email address is pretty self-explanatory, but I would call out SendGrid allows our customers to fully authenticate their domains, their links, as well as their IP addresses. And we do this as a way to prove full ownership to the ISPs and allows our customers to maintain reputation as they send their emails. Subject lines, the one thing I would call out here is we do allow for personalization of subject line. Um, as you can see here, I will be personalizing my first name into the subject line. The content header is important for any sender that might not be able to do a templated approach with SendGrid. We have a lot of customers today that have very, very dynamic template needs um, or are sending extremely personalized emails. And what a lot of them are doing is rendering their HTML on their end and then pushing us the raw HTML as part of this value parameter. And again, it's really a way to avoid any sort of templating if you have a robust template creation tool on your side already. Now headers, uh, this is really calling out our ability to allow customers to create X headers. Um, these are usually things used for things like feedback IDs. Um, however, I would call out that there are certain headers that SendGrid will not, will not allow a customer to rewrite. These would be things like origination IP, as well as uh, message ID, which SendGrid generates when you are processing an email. I will come back to custom args um, towards the end of this when we talk more about statistics offerings again. And the last remaining items here, IP pooling. This is really just SendGrid's ability for customers to create pools of dedicated IPs that they have purchased through SendGrid and then specify through an IP pool header which IPs they want delivering which messages. So really just a way to specify the IP at the time of send. Now I am using a template within my email and you can see me calling out that template ID here. Now this is essentially going to be the template I built in the transactional template engine and is going to now dictate which content I'm delivering with this message. Now let's talk a little bit about custom arguments and categories, and we'll start with categories. Now categories are usually, usually used to define the type of email I'm sending, or maybe the brand, um, et cetera, et cetera, but they're, they're used mostly to tag an outbound email and then later retrieve aggregate level statistics about how that tag performed. Now, we give customers access to different dashboards, such as the Category Stats API and the Category Stats dashboard to start to pull in and qualify how these, how these tags are performing. Now, you can see within my email, I'm using Purchase as my category tag. And if I go into the Category Stats dashboard, you can see that I am able to then grab the individual tag I'm looking for and then start to see actual events on how that tag has been performing. 
Now, as is the case with most of our other dashboards, these are all interactive. So I can start to select what types of events I'm interested in consuming through this dashboard, as well as the timeline and the aggregate, daily, weekly, or monthly. I can also always export these stats if I needed to. Now, furthermore, we do give customers a comparison dashboard for categories where I can start to compare numerous category tags side by side and then qualify maybe which tags are outperforming other tags. Now, custom arguments have a slightly different implementation in SendGrid and in, in that custom arguments are, ten, are typically used to define the unique recipient or the unique message. Um, a lot of the use case that we see for custom arguments are things like, I want to create my own message ID, as you can see that I'm going to do that here. Um, or I'm trying to tie two sources of record together. Maybe I track all of my recipients based on a recipient ID and not email address. Or maybe I need to track order identifiers like item IDs or purchase IDs, etc. Now, Custom arguments aren't stored in the user interface as categories are. Custom arguments are actually only passed back through webhook events. So to back up a little bit, a little bit SendGrid utilizes event webhooks to give customers granular logs. And really the requirements there are that a customer would host an endpoint that can accept posts from SendGrid's APIs. They would then give SendGrid the URL for that endpoint, as well as select the different types of events they're interested in having um, sent to their endpoint. And then in as near real time as possible, as these events are occurring, opens, clicks, unsubscribes, bounces, etc., SendGrid will post granular JSON events, events directly to a customer's endpoint. Now, the reason I'm discussing that is because these tags will now be involved or applied to every event corresponding to this unique message. So I actually delivered this email earlier, so we can go take a look at my event webhook. And here you'll see this is a processed event for the email I sent earlier today. And if we match that up, you'll see things like message ID, campaign ID, item ID, um, even purchase ID. These are all custom field values that I stored or I processed with my request when I was asking to deliver this email. And now you can see that these events or these tags will be present throughout all of my messages events from things like the time it was processed to the delivery of that email, um, so on and so on. Now you can also see a couple other things here like my category information will be present as well. Um, but really these webhooks are going to be a way to allow customers to maintain granular logs of all of the activity that's happening with their mail in a very granular fashion again. Now let's take a look at what that received co content copy will look like. And I have it pulled up now. And now you can see that within my content, I have replaced or personalized the, the email to show my first name. You can also see my own domain here as well as my friendly from. Um, my subject line has now been personalized as well. And I'm also displaying the English content. Now, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about SendGrid's email API. Um, and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you.